Good everyone, Bia Asian Day here. We're going to look into this Dell Optiplex 7480 all-in-one computer. So this is a 24-inch all-in-one computer. So what that means is all the processing components of the computer is actually integrated into the screen itself. So you actually don't have an external box which you then connect the computer. Right. So this is just the actual computer and you've got keyboard and mouse. It's pretty simple setup, it's nice and very nice and sleek if you want that. So we're going to look at the internals of this computer later in the video, so stick around for that. We'll also look at the temperature as well as the fan noise, and we'll then test out the other parts of the components of this computer here as well. So first off, we'll actually start off with what this computer can be configured with. With the processor wise, it's using the 10th generation Intel Core. So you can configure these with anywhere between an i3, an i5, and also an i7, as well as an i9. And with the RAM wise, it goes up to a maximum of capacity of 64 gigs of RAM, and that's using two DIMM slots. And as for storage wise, it has space for two M.2 slot SSD hard drive, as well as a two and a half inch hard drive if you want to put that in for the spin hard drives. As for the graphics wise, of course it's got the Intel integrated graphics, but you can opt in for an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 discrete graphics. Now as for the display wise, there are really only two options. They're both full HD options and they are rated to 250 nits of brightness and you can either get the non-touch version which I've got here or a multi-touch version. So what that means is you can then touch the screen and it will actually react to you. Let's have a look at the ports and buttons on this computer. Now on the bottom right hand corner of the screen in the front you will find the power button. On the left hand side of the computer at the bottom you will find a full size SD card reader, a USB-C port which is USB 3.1 Gen 2 port and then you have a USB type A port and that is a USB 3.1 Gen 1 with power share and you'll have a headphone jack. Looking at the back of the computer, starting on the left hand side, we've got HDMI in port. Now this is an interesting port because it allows you to plug another computer into this computer here and then use the display of this all in one as an external monitor. And right next to it is a HDMI port, which is version 1.4B. And this is where you actually plug a external monitor if you want to do dual screen or triple screen. And then we have our full size display port as well. Again, this is for your extended monitors. And then we have an RJ45 Ethernet port. And then we've got four USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports. Now they're type A ports. After that is the audio out jack. And then we have the AC power port where you plug in the power cable. The 7480 all one does come with an integrated 1080p webcam. It's just hidden away. It's actually hidden away on the top there. You just give a nice little push to the top and you'll see it pop itself up, which is really nice to see. And the microphones are actually located down here, not actually usually up there. This is a recording from the integrated 1080p webcam. So this is the video and the audio unedited so you can see what it looks like. Now I've got a bit of light shining on me at the moment because of the recording. I'm going to turn that key light off so you can see it from my ambient light there. So I'll just turn that off and you will see it adjust and this is what it looks like more than likely with a fair bit of darkness to there. So it's pretty much not that bright at the moment. And I'm going to turn my key light back on just so you can see what it looks like and I'll turn it back off again. Now I'd love to hear what your comments are on the audio and video of this webcam so put a comment below I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. The speakers are located on the bottom end of the display and when I did the test for the speakers for the maximum volume it managed to measure at a peak of 92.5 decibels which is actually really surprisingly loud uh, for this all-in-one computer. So that actually blew me away how loud these speakers were. Now as for sound quality, it had a little bit of bass there, but and when you bring it up to its maximum peak, it did start to distort a little bit, but I was just blown by how loud this computer can get. So you can actually do some crazy presentation on this one here for sure when at your desk, and you won't be having problems when you're doing video conferencing there at all. As for the temperature and fan noise of this computer, when I tested it out, I found most of the heat is sitting in the center of the computer, which is not unsurprising because that's where the processor sits, as well as the bottom right of 
the screen itself and that is, is where the exhaust is. So as the airflow is actually coming from the top and it pretty much flows all the way down to the bottom right hand corner. So that's the actual airflow direction itself. So when I did the measurements of the temperatures, my ambient temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. We are in winter here in Australia. So if you're in a more warmer climate, I expect these numbers to go up. So I did my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the hottest area measured at 29 degrees Celsius. And the fan noise, you're looking at 32 decibels and the core temperature was 35 degrees Celsius for the processor. Then put the computer on 20% load, so that's why you'd be doing average use or so office productivity work, surfing the web, streaming videos, and the maximum temperature read at 30 degrees Celsius, and the fan noise was still at 32 decibels, so still very quiet, and the core temperature was 39 degrees Celsius for the processor. Then I put the computer on 50% load, and the maximum temperature measured at 30 degrees Celsius still, and the fan noise was at 33 decibels and the core temperature was 57 degrees Celsius. And then I put the computer at 100% load and the maximum temperature read at 35 degrees Celsius and the fan noise was at 42 decibels. So it's got a little bit much more louder and the temperature of the processor core was sitting at 86 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, when it's doing average use for your office productivity, which is what this computer will more than likely be in its situation, it's actually quite quiet and it actually will be very happy to run without having the fan on. It's only until you really bring this computer at around about 80% more load, there's when you start to hear the fan starts kicking in. And it's not a really drowning sound for the fan neither as well too. So it's actually quite bearable in the office environment. Let's have a look at the internals. Now to get access to the internals, we need to remove the back cover. And before we remove the back cover, we need to remove the stand. Now, my advice is to actually put the computer flaying flat down, the screen side down, and then we should be able to access it much easier. Now, for, we need to remove the stand first, and it's just a matter of pushing this lever up, and then you just need to lift the stand upwards, and you see it will it quite easily give up very easily there. So that's it off. So once you remove the stand from the computer, all you need to do is press this lever downwards here, and then just give this light gray area just a push upwards there. So all you need to do is give it a nice little push upwards and it's quite easy to have it come out. And then you just got to lift that out. Straight away in the center, you can see the dim door. Now what this is, if you just lift this, you'll find the RAM, two slots of the RAM sitting right there. So you can quite easily do the upgrades without having to tear it apart any more further if you're just doing RAM upgrades. And on the right hand side, you can see the Caddy for the two and a half inch hard drive. Now to get access to the M.2 slot hard drives, you need to have a screwdriver with you handy and you need to undo five screws. There's one here and then four on, on the outside. So I'll just, I've pre undone all of them already. So I'll just got to do this last one here. And after that has been undone. So this is to remove the shielding cover. And it's just a matter of just lifting this up completely up from it. And on the top right hand corner of the board, you'll find the first M.2 PCIe slot for SSD hard drives. And on the bottom right hand corner is the second M.2 slot for PCIe hard drives. And on the bottom left hand corner is the Wi-Fi card. And of course, on the bottom here is the CMOS battery as well. I did perform the benchmarks for this particular computer and this one came configured with our i5-10500 processor with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 SSD hard drive in there. So I'll put up the scores for Passmark, Citibench R15 and R20, 3D Mark, PC Mark 10, Geekbench, Crystal Disk Mark, and Spec View Pref.
If you find this video informative or just to support my channel, give it a like. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button bottom of the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.